You've been so good and you keep on blessing me Everything that I have Everything, everything that I have and, that I am. and asking that you might continue that love and support going forward The Westview family has been very good About caring for those who have had to deal with that very tough experience Revelation chapter number two I'm looking at verses eight through eleven I am going to just focus on a piece of this in my reading, but we'll cover this whole section in the message today. The book says, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. Amen. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, right. but are a synagogue of Satan. Right. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison mm -hmm. that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Mm -hmm. Be faithful unto death Amen. and I will give you a crown of life. Amen. All right. Banished to the island of Patmos yes, sir. and forced to be away from the, the church. Uh -huh. The apostle John, the last apostle that was to live and the only apostle that was to die a natural death, yes, sir. was commanded by Jesus to write these letters to the angels of these different churches. Mm -hmm. I mentioned to you last week that the angels are not uh, the pastors, if you will. Right. But actually angels, mm -hmm. those that are so integrate, uh, inter, interrelated, so, the, so tied uh, integrally to the churches that when you speak of one, you speak of the other. Mm -hmm. All right. And so Jesus had the message go to them. And these letters were designed to speak a word, a specific word to each one of these churches. Mm -hmm. Each one heard something a little different. Yes. As Jesus pointed out things that were good, yes. things that were bad, and things that needed to change. Amen. It's interesting that when Jesus had the message go to the church at Smyrna, he did not have a rebuke. All right. He had a message to talk about their strengths yes. and not any weakness. Right. Now, when we talk about the church at Smyrna, this church was clearly in trouble. All right. It was a church that was very much under the pressure of the Roman government. All right. All right. But not only so, there was what Jesus was referred to as a synagogue of Satan Amen. Well. hanging around in that city. All right. And so for the next few minutes, allow me to take you on a visit to the Smyrna church. All right. All right. I want to remind you at the outset. You'll not find a beautifully constructed building. Mm -hmm. In fact, you'll not find a church building at all. Amen. Well, well. Amen. There'll be no plush chairs on, or pews. Yeah. No scarlet carpet. Uh -huh. You'll not find a theater style stage mm -hmm. and a marble podium. Yes, sir. No. You'll not see multiple screens. Well. And artistically created countdowns to worship time. Come on, Much rather you'll see a group of worn, tattered, mm. and torn Christians yes. struggling to hold together yes, as they hold to Jesus. Right, you'll find some of them trembling in fear. Yes, sir. Yet they will be resolute in faith. All right, all right. You'll hear some stories of missing Christians. Yes, sir. Christians that were pulled from their homes yes. and hauled off to face a mock trial. Yes, sir. You'll even find that some are simply not there mm -hmm. because they are waiting death. Yes, sir. All right, all right. And we hear Jesus say, don't fear. Mm -hmm. Any of those things which you are about to suffer. All right. Indeed, 
The devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. Let me use as a topic for the next few minutes. 10 days in the devil's prison. All right, brother. Wow. 10 days All right. in the devil's prison. Mm-hmm. You need to know a little bit more about the city of Smyrna. It was a former Christian city. Mm-hmm. It was a city that was on the shore, a seaport city. All right. It had a nice harbor into which those merchants carrying their wares could pull up and unload and sell in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. You could make some money in Smyrna. It was a city, though, that had been given over to emperor worship. And it had a resultant elaborate pagan temple set up. In Smyrna, they had had a a huge uh, structure dedicated to the emperor. Mm -hmm. Those in that city who wanted the favor of the emperor, would make sure that they worship there. Still, in all of this environment, Christianity had some success. It had raised some fruit. Mm -hmm. But the refusal of the church to bow down to Caesar and to bow down like their neighbors to this great uh, demonic temple caused the church to have some problems. Mm -hmm. And so the city of Smyrna had become a city of Christian persecution. Smyrna also housed a huge Jewish population. And some of you might think, well, that would be good news because the Jews were the people of God under the old covenant. But you have to remember these same Jews rejected Jesus. Many of these same Jewish leaders and their followers rejected the son of God. They called him an imposter. They considered him someone that was satanic. And so they weren't happy about the Christian population. In fact, they were individuals that were happy to accuse the Christians as being anti-Roman government. So that the Roman government would be mad at the Christians and bring forth persecution on the Christians while these Jews would sit on the sideline and laugh about it. Then they were able to maneuver Mm -hmm. politically and take the possessions of the Christians that had been arrested by the Roman government. Uh So if you and I were in the city of Smyrna, we would find ourselves having some Jewish people condemning us to the Roman government, going to the Roman government and saying, these people won't bow down to Caesar, and I caught them. Uh And while we be hauled off, we're hauled off to jail, they would come and take our home, take our possessions. Yes, sir. And we would not get them back. It's interesting that when you think about this Jewish population here in the city of Smyrna, you think about the words of Jesus. When Jesus told his antagonizers in John chapter 8 that you are of your father, the devil. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. You are as your father. No wonder Jesus said they are a synagogue, not of God, but a synagogue of Satan. And because of all of this Mm -hmm. and the Christian's refusal to engage in emperor worship, that church that we're visiting was dealing with a bloodthirsty persecution. Uh Can you picture it now? We walk in among them. Mm -hmm. They want to know who we are. Mm -hmm. They want to know if we are there to hurt them or there to comfort them. Mm -hmm. Are you here to accuse us to the Roman government? Or are you here to hold on to our hands as we all hold on to God's unchanging hand? All right, all right. This was the situation in this church. Mm-hmm. It was characterized by Jesus as troubled, poor, and slandered. And yet in the midst of all of this, Jesus said, I know what's happening. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Oh, be faithful unto death. Amen. All right. Ten days. All right in the devil's prison as these Christians were dealing with their circumstances. 
Jesus indicated jail time. And as he indicated jail time, he called upon them to be faithful. But I need you to understand the jailer. I need you to understand the techniques that the jailer used because they're the same ones he uses today. When we look at this text of scripture and we see what Jesus has to say, we find that this jailer has two particular things that he was doing to the people of Smyrna and that he does to the Christians of 2021. This jailer has a tendency of seeking to erode faith. Uh He wants to erode faith. He wants to rust it. He wants to rust out faith. How does this jailer work while we're in his prison? Well, first of all, he tries to tell us lies about Jesus. These Smyrna Christians were about to be in jail. They were about to be in the devil's prison and you and I are in the devil's prison. And when it is, has us uh, uh, captured in his prison, he starts telling us often and over and over again lies about Jesus. One of the things he told those Christians and one of the things he tells us is that Jesus is dead. All right. mm-hmm. He told them Jesus is dead. All right. Here they were. Some 60 years, maybe, since Jesus had gone into the earth. And they weren't first generation Christians. They didn't see Jesus walk the earth again. They heard that he died. They heard that he was raised, but they didn't see him. Some near 2,000 years later, you haven't seen Jesus. Somebody said, I saw him on a stained glass window. Oh, no. You just saw an artistic representation that itself is not accurate. That's all you saw. Somebody said, well, I saw him in a picture in my Bible. Oh, no. You just saw a European version of who Jesus is supposed to be. But you haven't seen Jesus. And these Christians were in jail, locked up or about to be, and they sang by uh, hearing from the, 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 the jailer that that Jesus you, you in here for? That Jesus is dead. He's dead. You haven't seen him, and yet you are holding on to him. Have you ever been tempted to think that Jesus is dead? This is the devil's attempt to corrode and to erode our faith. And he seeks to do it gradually. He seeks to do it a little bit at a time, to decompose it, to to try to get it to the point where it just wears out. Corrosion doesn't take place overnight. It's a gradual process. It takes time. Mm -hmm. And the devil tried to progressively erode these Christians' faith, but he first tried to erode Jesus' faith. I want you to think about Jesus. While Jesus walked the earth, he had to deal with the devil's progressive attempt to erode his faith. Uh Jesus' temptation didn't start in the Garden of Gethsemane. No, sir. Started before then. Uh-huh. The devil was after Jesus at the baptism of John. Yes, sir. When he went to John's baptism, the Bible said, having done that, the Spirit took him yeah. into the wilderness. Yeah. And he was tried. Yes, sir. You remember the story. Mm-hmm. You hungry, Jesus. Yeah, sure. You can turn these stones into bread. Yeah, look at the shape of these stones, Jesus. Yeah. They're small enough to look like a nice, freshly baked bread. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you turn it? Yeah. Turn that stone into oh, bread. And Jesus said, it is written, mm-hmm. man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Right. Well, Jesus, I can't get you with bread. I can't rest your faith in your father with bread. But what about your pride? Yeah. I can give you all the kingdoms uh-huh. of the earth. Yes, if you would bow down and worship me. Jesus, what about your ego? I heard that if you jump off this mountain, Mm 
Yeah. Angels won't let you dash your foot against the stone. And each time Jesus rejected the ploy, and I'm trying to share with you the fact that the trial, or the trial of Jesus was not just in the garden. Uh -huh. That's right. After he couldn't get Jesus in the wilderness, he started attacking Jesus by the religious leaders. Right. There you go. Yep. They came and they said things to Jesus that were terrible. Right. In John 8, they basically inferred, well, Jesus, you out here talking about God being your father. I don't know about that, Jesus. Because there's some talking town that Mary All right. uh -oh. Come on, had a baby, yeah. but don't nobody know. Uh -huh. <laughs> who the daddy is. You see, they were trying to erode the, the, the faith of Jesus. That was the devil working his work. Because if you really think about this message, Jesus was in the devil's prison during his ministry. And then since he couldn't get Jesus by the religious leaders, he said, I know what I'd do. I'll send Peter in to visit him. Yes, sir. While he's in my prison. All right. Peter, go in there and tell Jesus he can't go to the cross. Uh -huh. well, well. Tell him that that should never happen. Yeah, yeah. But Jesus saw who it was. Yes, and he said, get behind me, Satan. Yes, Got to go to the cross. Peter, you can never be saved unless I go to this cross. And then he came to Jesus in the garden. And he was trying to erode the faith of Jesus in the garden so much so that the Son of God began to pray, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Let me take another route. The devil was trying to erode his faith. But then Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Right. But he wasn't finished in. Come on, Even on the cross, yeah. the devil tried to erode his faith. You see, Jesus was in prison. Yes, sir. That's why he knows what he's talking about here. The devil is about to put some of you in prison. How you know, Jesus? I've been there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been there. Yeah. And so as he's hanging on the cross doing the work that no man could do. Amen. Those came wagging their finger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He saved others, but he can save himself. Oh, the devil was trying to erode the faith of Jesus. And this is the pattern of what happens with you and me. Yes, sir. You've been in trouble, haven't you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Come on, Michael. You've been hurting. Yes, sir. Somebody says, I'm not hurting today. Yeah, but you've been hurting. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've had times when you've been hurting. Yes, sir. I don't need to know exactly what it was, but I know you've been hurting. How do I know? I've been hurting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Christians hurt. Yes, sir. And it's during this time that what the devil is doing is trying to gradually erode our faith. Yes, sir. A disappointment here. All right. A personal loss there. Uh huh. An embarrassment here. Mm -hmm. A setback there. Mm -hmm. A sickness here. Yeah. A major loss there. All right. And all the while that's happening in our lives, we have the devil who is the jailer coming in at our jail cell and whispering, Jesus is dead. All right. Mm. But I love what Jesus does with this letter. As the devil tries to erode our faith, I love what Jesus does with this letter. Uh -huh. As the devil tries to erode us, they say that stainless steel cons constantly surrounded by water and oxygen begins to rust yeah, yeah. in four or five days. Yes, sir. All right. But did you notice in this text, Jesus said 10 days, Come on now. Hmm. 10 days. <laughs> If it takes only four or five days to, to erode and rust stainless steel, Jesus said your faith is more precious than stainless steel. So the devil's going to have you in prison 10 days. 10 days. And while we have this 10-day period in the prison house, Jesus tells us don't believe the devil. Amen. I'm not dead. Amen. Right. Did you notice the letter? 
All right. Did you read it carefully? Yes, sir. Did you see how Jesus came and he said in verse number eight, I am the first and the last yes. who was dead. Mm. I know what the devil telling you. Yes, sir. You in his prison. Mm -hmm. He telling you that you're in trouble and I'm dead. Uh -huh. I was dead. Yeah. But I'm alive. Amen. Amen. And when the devil is telling you Jesus is dead because he hasn't fixed your problem. All right. Uh, come on, Mike. Remember what Jesus said. I was dead. Come on now. Yes, sir. But I'm alive. Amen. Oh, you in the prison? I was dead. I know what the jail is telling you, but I'm right here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Various interpretations have been given to this term or this number 10. Uh -huh. Jesus said the devil is going to have you in jail 10 days. Yes, sir. Various commentators have tried to explain the number 10. Yes. Uh -huh. Let me share a couple of things with you. All right. Go ahead. There is something uh, of numerology in the scriptures. All right. I didn't say astrology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said numerology. All right, yeah. There are certain numbers that mean something in particular in the Bible. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You've seen the words if you read Revelation. Six, six, six. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And we're looking for six, six, six to be in somebody's forehead. You're looking the wrong way. Wrong way. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, no. You hear the Bible use the term three days. Yeah. Yes, sir. Three nights. Yes, sir. You hear seven days, seven nights, and we wonder what's going on here. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some Semitic concept behind these numbers. And when it comes to the number 10, there are some that say, well, he's talking about uh, 10 days of this or 10 days of that. The idea here is a short period of time, uh -huh. but a thorough period of time. All right. Okay. If seven is a complete week, well, 10 is longer than seven. Mm -hmm. It's a longer period of time, mm -hmm. but it's not infinity. All right. All right. What Jesus is using this term 10 days, basically what he's saying is a brief period of time, but it does not feel like it. All right. Hmm. You ever had pain in your life that yes, sir. you look back on now and you say, oh, that wasn't too bad. Uh -huh. Wasn't too long. But during the time you were in it, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking about back pain. <laughs> I'm not talking about physical pain. I'm talking about the pain that we use that word tribulation. Yeah. That word tribulation means a pressing together. Have you ever had your mind feeling like they're just pressing? Yeah. Things are pressing. You can't sleep. Right. We pop in Excedrin and mm -hmm. Tylenol, yeah. Advil, uh -huh. Motrin, whatever it is. They try to get rid of that pressure. Right. We came up with an expression in our English idiom. We talk about being caught between a rock and a hard place. This is what Jesus is pointing out. These are times of testing, tribulation. And in the midst of it, Jesus says, now what I want from you is faithfulness. I want you to be faithful. So while the devil is saying, Jesus is dead, Jesus is saying, I'm right here. Yeah, I went to the cross, but it couldn't hold me. I went to the tomb, but it couldn't hold me. It was impossible that death could hold me. I even went down to Hades. It couldn't hold me. I'm here. I see you in jail. I've been there. Look on the wall. You'll see my initials in your cell room. I've been there. <laughs> and I'm alive yes, sir. Yeah. and the devil is a liar yes, sir. what else does he try to do while we're in jail when he has us locked up in his shackles mm -hmm. he wants to incarcerate our hope All right. well have you ever been tempted to think that Jesus is out of touch with what's going on with it All right. what the devil tries to do when we're in jail he tries to tell us well you're here and you see Jesus hasn't come yet Mm. Oh, yeah. And you know what? He doesn't even care. Mm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He doesn't know what's happening with you. All right. And if he knows, he doesn't care. Right. Mm. That's what the devil says while we're in prison. Oh, yeah. During this 10 day period, the devil wants us to think that Jesus doesn't care. All right. mm -hmm. He tried this with Job. Yes, he did. Mm. 
You remember when Job, oh, yeah. man that came to church every Sunday, Come on, brother. paid his tithes, uh -huh. gave his offerings, mm -hmm. first one in the building, on, turn on the sound system, yes, <laughs> right down the podium, yeah. turn on the spirituals, uh -huh. fill up the communion trays, Thanks, set up the microphones, yeah. have the temperature right, yeah. and the last one to leave the yeah. building. Yeah. Man that showed up all the time. When you win problem, you call them. Brother Job came run over. Oh, Come on. <laughs> and then God had a visit one day yes, by the jailer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Jailer showed up. Mm -hmm. God said, have you seen my servant Job? Yes, <laughs> Devil said, yeah, I've seen him. All right. I see him. Yeah. But you can't talk too much to me about Job. Uh-huh. <laughs> Man, you top, stop blessing him so much. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pull away his Mercedes. <laughs> Make him go to the thrift store to get his suits. Yeah, come on, man. Take his job away. Yeah. If you do that kind of stuff uh -huh. and some other stuff, he'll curse you. Come on, man. God said, I see my brother, my, my, my servant Job. Uh -huh. I see my servant Terry, All right. All right. All right. my servant Willie, All right. Sydney, yeah. see my servant Belinda, yes, sir. Linda, Melissa, All right. see my servant Bria, yes, sir. see my servants all in this building, even the names in call. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I believe in them because uh -huh. they believe in me. Yes, sir. Amen. All right. Amen. You can do what you want to them. Come on, man. But you can't kill him. Preach back. That's Preach. That's it. That's it. That's it. You ever wonder why you're still here? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're not here because of anything you did to protect yourself. That's right. Amen. Amen. I got my Smith and Wesson. That's why I'm protected. No. No. <laughs> no, you're only protected because there's an angel watching yes, sir. over you. Yeah. Right. There's an angel that God assigned to Kena. Yeah. Keep her safe. Mm -hmm. In that bank, mm -hmm. something could happen any day. Yes, sir. All right, all right. All right. But before the man come in or the woman come in, brandishing some iron, yeah. to talk about give me the money. Yes, sir. Kena's angel said, "Hold up, Jack. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, Mike. Can't touch this. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's for all of you in here." And for all of you on Christ, in Christ online. Uh -huh. And the devil came to God. Well, let me, let me take stuff. And he took all that stuff from Job and took life from uh, his children. And, and Job said, well, all right, come on. the Lord gave. The Lord took away. Yes, he did. Right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. And then the devil got in his wife. Yes, sir. Mm. You see how the devil does? Yes, sir. Job was thinking about hope. Mm -hmm. I have hope. Yes, I'm hang on till my change comes. Uh -huh. So the devil, the jailer, when he had Job in jail and Job is pulling on the, the, the bars of the cell, yes, the devil sneaked over there in his wife. Uh -huh. So why don't you curse God and die? Come on. Come on. You still holding on to your integrity? Yes, sir. You still got hope? Yes, sir. You fool! Yes. Curse God and die! Job recognized who it was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, he did. You see what has to happen to you and me as we in jail and the devil tries to take away and incarcerate our hope? We've got to be able to see what's really happening. Yeah. So the devil did the same thing to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He tried to take away the hope of Jesus. Right. He tried to take away the hope of Job, and he's trying to take away your and my hope. But Jesus has a message to this church. Y'all right. still with me? Yes, sir. Listen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to these Christians that were in jail. The devil trying to erode their faith. He trying to erode their hope, mm -hmm. take away, lock up their hope, and try to get them to quit. Come on, man. And Jesus says, I'm here, mm -hmm. and I know. Yes, sir. Listen to Jesus. I want you to see this. I want you to see this in the text of Scripture. Sometimes we read, and we don't really read. <laughs> Look at verse number nine. I know. Now that word no, you might not know this off just reading the text in English, 
But the Greek term uh, for know has the idea I know intimately. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. I know you intimately. I know the situation. Mm -hmm. It is not the idea of I read about it in a book. Right. It's the idea of I am fully aware. Right. Yes, sir. What are you dealing with right now? Yes, all right, all right. Yeah, what is it you're dealing with? Mm -hmm. uh, you got anxiety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got concern, got worry. Right. I'm, uh, I, it's not just COVID. No, sir. Come on. This stuff that was happening before COVID came, yes, I'm messing with you. Yeah, I know, and messing with me too. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Happening stuff happening in your household. Yeah, right. Yeah, mess with you. Yeah, on your job. Mess with you. Uh -huh. You go to the doctor, you get a report, doesn't sound too good, and mess with you. Yes, sir. All this stuff, mess with you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You in jail? Yes, sir. <laughs> We're locked up. All right. Come on. Jesus said, "Devil about to lock you up." Right, You're in tribulation. I'm in tribulation. Ten days. Uh -huh. <laughs> we just counting these days. We're trying. Lord, seems like we can't get past the first day. Yeah, mm. We're then trying to mark on the wall how many days, and we just can't get past one. That's right, bro. Mm. Jesus said, "I know it. Yes, I know. Yes. I intimately know what's happening in your life. You see, it is not that God is unaware." situation or is unable to help or doesn't care to help. No. God knows what's happening, but he also knows that it is our faith that has to be tried in order for it to be worth anything. I got my first COVID shot, church. It gave me a needle in the arm. And about two minutes after they pulled it out, I started cutting the fool. <laughs> he pulled it out and I said sat there a couple of minutes and said ow <laughs> never said you cut that out you, fool. <laughs> you get your shot they give you a card and they put information on that card and they say keep that card with you uh -huh. and when you come back get your second shot and we'll indicate it there that way you go around and if you got to get on the plane so I got my card <laughs> shot right mm -hmm. this stuff is to try to help us go forward yes. right mm -hmm. it's to help us keep on going yes. well our faith has got to be worth something yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like that COVID shot mm -hmm. All right. we hope it's worth something yes, sir. Yes. we hope it's valuable yes. we hope it's valuable but before they gave it to us it had to be tested yes sir Come on, sir. Your faith has to be tested. tested. All right. God knows what we're dealing with. Brown, why would the Lord have us go to prison to have our faith tested? How do you know that? Look at the text. Yes, he says, do not fear in those things that you're about to suffer. The devil's going to throw you in prison. Look at why. Why, Jesus? So that you may be tested. Mm -hmm. We got to be tested. We have to see if we, you know, get on that, get on that, get on the airplane. Brown, I want to see your card. I want to see that you've had your COVID test. Uh -huh. <laughs> Might give me another test. See if it's, see if I come out all right. All right. Mm -hmm. But you can't get into heaven unless you've been tested. That's right, bro. Well, well. You got to be tested. Yeah. Right. Well, the faith has to be tested. Uh, and while we're being tested, how do we make it come out right? Look at the message. Be faithful. Yeah. Faithfulness in trial is the only way we make it. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness. Which leads to this last thing. The message that Jesus gave is he gives a reward. Look at him. These saints are in prison. We're in prison. They were trying to erode our faith and incarcerate our hope. Jesus said this is going to happen for 10 days. But he says, be faithful and I'll give you a crown of life. Amen. Well, let's talk about that for just a brief moment. You see, the call is for lifelong faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Faith is being certain of what you hope for uh -huh. and certain of what you can't see. Man. I don't know about you. I've been in some problems. I can't see the way out. Amen. All right, all right. Can't see it? I think you're the same way. Yes, sir. Faith in the book of Revelation is the way we persevere. Right. By putting our trust in God, who is sovereign over history. Yes, sir. I love the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Jesus come out and said, I'm Alpha. 
and omega. I know the jump and I know the end. I got the past, I got the present, and I got the future. I got the whole world in my hand. What you worried about it for? Why are you worried about tomorrow? I already got that. If I can make the world and make humans yes. in just six days yes, on, and make it in such a way the greatest scientists have never been able to figure it out. Right. Isaac Newton getting an apple on his head still can't figure it out gravity. Yes. All the solar system studies can't figure it all out. We got NASA still trying to send a ship to the moon. Why? We don't know what's happening. Yeah. So the Lord God knows all that. Jesus said, what you worry about tomorrow for? Amen. What can you do to bring it? Mm. Nothing. Could you, what could you do to bring today? Nothing. Well. We react to what God has already done. Amen. Right. Sun comes up. Oh, we wake up. Oh, we react to what God has done. We're not in control. No, God. God's in control. We just react. Yes, sir. Comes night time. Oh, time to sleep. <sighs> We're just reacting <laughs> to what God's already done. We get up, breathe. We're reacting because the breeze said, look, fool, I need some air. <laughs> all right, all right. But we're reacting to what God's already put out here. God says, I got this thing. I'm Alpha and Omega. But you got to keep on believing that. Now, let me drop this on you. Jesus said, the devil is about to put you in prison for 10 days. I want you to understand what he's saying here. The Lord says, be faithful unto death. Now, uh, let that ruminate. Be faithful unto death. Be faithful unto death. Be faithful unto death. Let that ruminate. You see, in Roman prison, once you were taken as a Christian and convicted, they first gave you a chance. You want to denounce Christ? If you say yes, they let you go. Uh -huh. They might even give you your stuff back. All right. Um. You, want to, you still want to hold on to Jesus? Uh -huh. And if you said no, and some Christians did. Mm. Some Christians said, no, no, this is too much. It, it, it got between, uh, you know, Lord, I'm with you with thick and thin, but it got too thick, so I had to get in the wind. Uh -huh. They ran out on Jesus. Yes, uh -huh. So they gave you a chance to denounce him. Mm -hmm. If you didn't denounce Jesus, what they would do was take you into prison. Yes, sir. But listen. Your prison term was not ever thought to be something that you would be released from. Mm -hmm. Hear me. Come on. You only had two things that were going to happen All right. once you got locked up. Either you were awaiting death All right. All right. or you took death. Mm -hmm. mm. That was it. All right. He's not telling these Christians, be faithful in the death. You're going to have your trial, then you're going to get out. Go back home and enjoy yourself. Cook some eggs and toast and all that stuff. <laughs> no. They were going into jail. They weren't coming out. No, sir. All right, all right. They were going to die. They are going to be killed. Yeah. Be faithful until death. Jesus is not saying, stay there 10 days, you'll get out, you'll live to be 95 years old, and then you'll die a sweet death. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus is saying, you're in there, and you're not coming out. Amen. You're going to die. I'm telling you, you're going to die. But I want you to do is not have hope in getting out of the Roman prison and going back home. What I want you to do is to go on and face and take death. All right. All right. And when you do that, I'm going to give you a crown of life. All right. All right. What I'm trying to tell you, church, is we're in this world to have a gracious reward that won't be experienced in this world. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh my. Christianity has been painted in the wrong way uh -huh. in many instances today. Right. We think about the greatness we can have in this life. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to have this, that, and the other. Everything's going to be peaceful. Uh -huh. No. That's right. You're not here to stay. Amen. You're not here to have heaven here. Oh, 
No, sir. Neither am I. Amen. All right, all right. We are here to be in jail. Amen. Mm. And the only way out is death. Amen. That's it. Mm. That's it. But if we're faithful, all right. while we're here in jail, there is something coming. Yeah. That the world cannot give. He said, if you're faithful unto death, I will give you a crown of life. We get too worried down here about physical death. You know, there's really, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. You give me just a couple of more minutes. You won't have to listen to me for the next three weeks. Look at this. Look at verse number 11. <laughs> he who has an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Uh -huh. He who overcomes, listen. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. That's it, bro. Look out, man. Put that thing. Man. You know, there's really three ways to die. All right, brother. We die to sin. Yes, sir. Or rather, we die in the sense of being dead in our trespasses and sin. All right. When a child is born, he gets to an age, she gets to an age of accountability. He or she can make decisions, and that's where sin comes in. Yes, sir. Yes. And that's where we need Jesus. Yes, sir. Because as Paul says in Ephesians 2, we're dead in trespasses and sins. Yeah. We baptize into Christ, and if you need to do that, I hope you do it today. You baptize in the Christ. We got the water ready today. Amen. When you baptize in the Christ, we got the clothes ready today. We we'll baptize you today if you believe in Jesus and turn from your sin. Amen. You get in the water, you come out, and you're now free from the death to sin. All right. Free from trespasses and sins. All right, brother. But then there's physical death. Mm-hmm. We have physical death. You know, the body just gives out. Yeah. You've been to funerals lately. Someone just had one yesterday. Yeah. But you know, physical death is not the worst. Come on, man. Physical death is the worst the devil can do to you. That's right. Come on, come on. Come on Mike. Let me say it again. Physical death is the worst the devil can do to you. Yeah. You see, we're in his prison. And the power he has over us is the fear of physical death. Uh -huh. Read the book of Hebrews. All right. Mm -hmm. But physical death is the worst that ever can do to you. All right. All right. He can't do any more to you than that. Mm -hmm. So Jesus tells us, look, don't you worry about the one that can kill the body. Amen. That's it, bro. That's it. That's right. You ought to be all worried about the one that can kill body and soul. So he says, be faithful on the death, and I will give you a crown of life. Where are you going, Brown? You're getting to the point that when it comes to this text, Jesus is saying, you need to avoid eternal death. Yeah, that's it, bro. Man, man. And eternal death comes to us, and it's called the second death. Yes, yes. The second death. Uh -huh. You read on in the book of Revelation, you'll see what the Bible talks about. When death and Hades are thrown into the lake of fire and the devil and all his hangout. Yeah, this is the second death. Yeah. <laughs> but those that are faithful don't have to worry right. Right. about the second death. Right. And so I'm on my way to that fair land Amen. where the soul of man yeah, never dies. Right. My darkest night shall turn to day where the soul of man right. never dies. Right. No sad farewells. Yeah. No tear dim eyes yeah. where all is love and Peace and joy in the soul of man never dies. I don't want to worry about the second death. The first one's bad enough. When I come back, when Jesus comes, I don't want to die again. I want to be able to hear the Lord say, well done. Good and faithful servant. Lord, who are all of those? Those are the ones going through the second death. Aren't you glad you avoided that? And I look and say, thank you, Jesus. I don't want to die anymore. I'm so good. Keep on blessing me. Everything that I have. Everything that I am. Every blessing you see. Oh, Lord.